obituaries, and more is DeWittDailyNews.com. Since 2008, DeWittDailyNews.com has delivered fresh online content to Internet readers. From the city council to school board to the county board and more, DeWittDailyNews.com covers the local news you expect from the area's number one local news source, and it's all absolutely free. Now you have even more ways to access DeWittDailyNews.com. Whether you're at your desktop, laptop, tablet, iPhone, or smartphone, DeWittDailyNews.com is delivered to all those platforms. That's right. It's even there on your iPhone and smartphone, the same local news, weather, and sports that's on the full-size edition is on your iPhone and smartphone just by going to DeWittDailyNews.com. If you haven't tried it, why don't you go to Central Illinois' leading online source for local news, police blotter, for the record information, obituaries, and more on your desktop, laptop, iPhone, or smartphone, DeWittDailyNews.com. Hey, this is Todd Gleason from Illinois Extension here with a time change for our daily market report on WHOW. You can now catch our daily review of the commodity markets at 506 on all of WHOW's many platforms. You'll still hear all of our commodity analysts and weather professionals each afternoon, but at a brand new time. And you'll still hear the weekly wrap up of the commodity markets right here on WHOW when Commodity Week airs Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Remember the time change for the daily closing market report on WHOW at our new time, 506 p.m. weekdays. Your friend is Central Illinois, W-H-O-W. Top of the morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. The WHW Morning Show is streaming to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. Stephanie Kuntz is the executive director of Encore Developmental Services, our guest in studio. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Seth. Sounds like uh, apple and pork was very, very successful for, for you all. How about that? Yeah, it was um, really successful. It was you know our first year doing like a booth like that, mm-hmm. selling a product Mm -hmm. um which was lemonade shakeups and iced tea (laughs) and it was we did not stop serving like all day from you know half an hour in until like the very you know trail end of the day yeah yeah we did not stop serving. that's amazing how many lemon shakeups you think you served i have no idea (laughs) (laughs) how many lemons did you go through we went through nine cases of lemons and how many is in a case roughly varies on they're the, the lemon. Oh, size. the size. I see. I see. Gotcha. Um, you know, you could do the math. We um, pounded and cut and squeezed. Oh, man. A whole lot of lemon. How many forearms were sore that next, oh, that Monday? That next Monday, <laughs> it was a whole week. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. The recovery. The yes, recovery. Yes. Sure. And sure. The bending. We have to do high tables next year. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna uh, do it again next year then. That's what we're talking about. Yes, we've saved the things. We have cabinets just for Apple and Porsche. Uh-huh. So I guess that means we're going to try it again. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's it's a great opportunity. You know, it it's it's really hard to pass up, you know, that raising whatever it is you raise. I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about that or not, yeah, but it's, it, it's 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 hard to raise that much money in two days. You know what I mean? So yes. or hard to pass that up yes. that opportunity. So um, did you want to talk about how much you um, raised? Sure. I mean, our total what we raised that we made selling these lemonade shakeups was over ten thousand dollars. Wow. Towards eleven. So, um, yeah, we were completely. You know, I was blown away. I had no idea to expect that kind of wow. kind of money from that weekend. Uh-huh. Um, I'm glad we did because it was so much work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but if it wasn't, yeah, that great. I don't know if you know I would want to put that much effort into it. But it. Was, I mean, you got paid five thousand dollars a day. That's hard know, to beat. You know what I, I mean? Know, it was great. <laughs> and also, it's all the exposure. You yes, know, exactly. Yeah, people true. Were out there, you know, just having a blast. Um, you know, we had folks that we served that were helping us make today shakeups. They came and they visited with us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. We even had, and we did have one person who was at who. And so, if I I apologize, I guess to any animal rights people, but um, we did have a um, friend of Encore who has a a sheep, and um, she put on an Encore T-shirt. <laughs> and, oh wow! <laughs> on on the on the animal, and it was going around, um, passing huh. out our flyers. Really? And just yeah. Huh? It was Interesting. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. It's a it's unique fun. little twist. Right? You don't see a sheep yeah. on the grounds very often. No. So. And I, we did. You know, they just say, "Hey, hey, let's do this." And so huh. they did it on their own, and we're like, yeah. "Cool." And so, fun. how about the money raised? Where remind us where you're going to put that, that for is, encore? Um, well, since it's so great, we're kind of splitting it up a little bit. So it's going into to help our employment services program to bulk 
up those funds because those funds, it's always a very underfunded um, program. But also we've decided to, to look into um, getting an AED for our space. For oh, our, like um, the, the, um, the, um, the, yeah. Yeah. The shocky thing. Yes. Um, when someone, um, <laughs> first aid kit tool thing. Yes. yes. The official term, the shocky thing, <laughs> the shocky thing. I like it. We'll put that on the record. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, that's great. So, yeah. um, you, you, now how, like you talked about the, um, the amount raised and able to split it up a little bit. Right. Uh, how much is that going to benefit just, you know, other areas of the budget and things maybe you would have to dedicate that to, you know, right. normally, but now what else are you going to be able yeah, to do so thanks that to that? Will, um, that frees up some funding for um, some of our um, projects um, around our building because, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, we're in the old sale barn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are always, always projects. So, and we've got, we'll talk about kind of yeah, the developments some big projects coming up. Yeah, with that here in a moment. But I want to just wrap up that conversation about the apple and pork weekend. You talked about the exposure piece. Yeah. How much does that mean to you? How far do you think that could go for the agency? I think it could go really far. It fits with our mission and what we want to do is to get um, to have our, our people that we serve are just members of our community like mm -hmm. anyone else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is just exactly what we want to do is just to be out there in the community and doing our thing. How much did you maybe hear you know, people knew HRC, but they didn't know Encore continued on and kind of really just kind of morphed itself into, you know, took that over, I guess. Right. How much did you have to talk about that? And and that's not a bad thing, but, you know, how much did that come up perhaps in the weekend? That really didn't too much didn't, in the okay. weekend. I think a lot of the people, you know, were from out of town. Uh-huh. And so we got a lot of, you know, hey, this is what we do. This is our 20, over 20,000 square, square foot warehouse. Come shop with us. Yeah. Come see, you know, a lot of, um, I guess, awareness, you know, that we actually run a store. Right, sure. And um, that we do serve people with disability. The old stuff still comes up sometimes with people, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I'm talking with someone and in the community. But it, it didn't really play a big piece at that point. That's good. Yep. That's good. Excellent. Well, hopefully that pays off and more people coming to the thrift store and yes. uh, supporting you that way. So right. excellent. Anything on apple and pork weekend? I didn't touch on Stephanie. You want to put out the um, chorus. It's, it was great. It was just, I think you touched on most everything. We had a great time good. and um, we will be doing it again. Well, it was good to visit with you. The 10 minutes we got to share out yeah, there as well. Fun. So uh, thank you for making time for us as we kind of wandered around. And I know it's very busy and, you know, I, I really appreciate you and and the many other folks that uh, we, we come up in their booth and want to talk while they're serving people and making food and all of that. So um, again, our guest in studio is Stephanie Kuntz, Executive Director of Encore Developmental Services in uh, DeWitt County, our guest. And Stephanie, let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned the, the things going on within the facility. Last time you were in, you introduced us to what is going to become probably a very big focus. It has been a big focus just in talking with you off the air a little bit about everything you've had to do. Facility wise, the state fire marshal's office inspection uh, and and some things that came up there. Just give us the background on what happened and we'll dive into the latest. OK, so in order for us to keep serving people that way we do to keep our certificate, part of our the process is we have to have um inspections, regular inspections from the state fire marshal's office. We had not how it had ours due to COVID and all that stuff since 19. So we were overdue at that point. Mm -hmm. It was every two years. They've extended it now to every four years. Mm -hmm. So they came um, this summer to do their inspection. And with that, our building has been um, inspected since 96. I found the records from our first inspection was in 1996, giving mm -hmm. them an A plus rating and how wonderful they had done mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Of course, since then, fire uh, the life safety codes is the official term um, have hugely changed. Mm -hmm. And so a new fire marshal came from 19 from forever, we'd had the same inspector come into our space right. I think, for a long time. Um, and so he had retired mm -hmm. and a new fire inspector came in um, to our space and mm -hmm. walked through and went, oh, I'm going to have to talk to my supervisor about this. Mm -hmm. So we went, really? That's what I went. Um, this has not been a big issue in the past. You know, we've, we've gone through a done inspection, mm -hmm. you know, found things that we've always, you know, things that we fixed, you know, doors that need to be changed if we mm -hmm. made any, mm -hmm. you know, any difference to the structure, you know, rate a fire door here, put, you know, mm -hmm. do an exit sign there, that kind of thing. Simple things. Yes. Not, we, yeah, not, uh, it, not structural. Yeah, yeah. 
things. Not financially strenuous things. A lot, yeah, 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 not yeah. a big deal. Yeah, right. So he came back with four other inspectors and fire marshals. There mm -hmm. were five people. We expected two. Mm -hmm. Five people came into our space mm -hmm. and um and just started, you know, with their pads, <laughs> notepads, and just writing down everything. Wow. Um, and they um, actually said to me, we're not here to shut you down. Um, it really did, you know, feel like that to a lot. There was a lot of, you know, a lot tension. of things, yeah. a lot of tension, mm -hmm. a lot of things going on. Um, so they went and discussed the things. And then um, I got a report a few weeks later. And that report changed our classification. Every business has a classification, the fire marshal, from one classification, classification, which was business existing, to four separate classifications. That it's very complicated. This life safety code is um, very detailed and and kind of um, kind of weaves in and out of each other. So it can be. I, I would never dream of. Um, even begin to really try and understand. I have a very limited in my, in my research, but um, so so they changed it to four different and recommended that we see an architect um, to look at um, redesigning the spaces to fit the life safety code. Wow. Um, so significant there and and the things that they're asking us to change are um, firewalls. Mm -hmm. They want. Um, and firewalls are, a, I didn't know anything about firewalls, go all the way, all the, way to the ceiling, mm -hmm. which makes total mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There are different um, hourly rates on how they are, one hour here, two hours here, um, a, they, um, changing in exits and where exits are and in fire rating of exit doors. Like if you've ever been in the store, there's like a big mm -hmm. garage door there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not good. We need mm -hmm. to change all those exits. Um, Probably and, a lot of stuff that makes sense, but given it, your, you know, your business structure, your organization structure, it doesn't make sense. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. Well, and one thing too is is a, a updated alarm system, or and or or maybe a sprinkler, um, sprink just be sprinkled, which would be huge. Mm -hmm. um, it's yes, I completely agree. Our building is old. <laughs> you know, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. We've always known that, you know, something happens in that warehouse and, you know, it's going to go. And so we've always been very careful with fire drills and things like that. So we just um, it's it's just one more thing. Um, and if you look at that barn, you know, they want there's no structure mm -hmm. to build these walls where they're wanting them. Mm. So we're talking about putting up huge structures and huge walls in a 20,000 square foot warehouse that go to, I don't even know how high mm -hmm. that old pole barn ceiling is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what can it lead to? Because that roof of the pole barn is, you know, mm -hmm. it's an old metal roof. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So how, so just all the different things that that's going to bring, how do we go forward? Um, it's potentially a lot of money to put into an old building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it, there's a lot there to unpack. And I'll tell yes. you what, Stephanie, I looked at the clock. Let's take a time out and let's dive more into that. You know, okay. kind of where you're at, what's been going on lately and what is kind of ahead for the organization as it relates to this. In the meantime, how do folks learn more about Encore Developmental Services? They can find us on our Facebook pages at um, Encore Services or at Encore Thrift Store or www.encoreservices.org. Stephanie Koontz, Executive Director of Encore Developmental Services is our guest in studio. More to come with her on the WHOW Morning Show. Now that the weather is turning colder, who's needing a new coat? At Love It Once More Thrift Store in Clinton, we have all our coats on sale this month for 20% off. This is Connie encouraging you to shop early for the best selection and to check out our Facebook page or dewadailynews.com. Hi, this is Ryan Utterback at Utterback Real Estate, and we've got you covered. It's finally time for pumpkin spice and coveralls. No, I mean covering all of our buyers and sellers' needs, like pumpkin spice coffee and caramel-covered apples. And that's why you're the other Ryan. Get covered by clicking the Utterback Real Estate icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. We've done it again. NK Seeds is still the fastest growing seed brand. NK outperformed the competition 
and we have the numbers to prove it. Across 15 trials in Illinois, NK1188 AgriSure Above outyielded Pioneer products by an average six bushel per acre advantage. Bushels don't lie. Get more local yield results at nkseeds.com slash harvest. It's no secret that employers are having a difficult time hiring qualified personnel, whether full or part-time. The Miller Media Group wants to help you, the employer, to find the candidates you're looking for. That's why we've created IllinoisJobPost.com. That's IllinoisJobPost.com. This website is part of a broad radio and internet employment campaign available through the Miller Media Group. Contact your account manager or email sales at RandyRadio.com for more information. IllinoisJobPost.com is where we put the power of radio and the internet to attract prospective candidates. DeWitt County's number one source for local news is on the air and online 24 hours a day. The latest local news stories are heard every hour on Central Illinois news station, the big 1520 AM and 92.3 FM WHOW. Stream live at DeWittDailyNews.com. They're also heard every hour on the station that's your easy choice, 95.9 FM WEZC. And to read the latest local news on your electronic device, including tablets, iPhones, and smartphones, go to DeWittDailyNews.com. DeWitt County's number one source for local news is on the air online 24 hours a day. Your friend in Central Illinois, W-H-O-W. Once again, a good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. The WHOW Morning Show streams to Facebook and YouTube, brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your peak and insurance agent in Clinton. Stephanie Kuntz is the executive director of Encore Developmental Services, our guest in studio, and just unpacked uh, the, uh, the, the story of state fire marshal's office coming in inspecting their building and uh just finding uh you know notes and notes and pages and pages of things that you're gonna have to do stephanie um and uh it's you know i i I appreciate you know the (laughs) trying not to make it sound a big like a big deal but it really is uh and it's going to be expensive so in that time since those inspectors left what have you been doing what's what's the you know last uh eight weeks been like for you So, you know, the first part was really unpacking that. And it was like, what are we facing here? Mm -hmm. Because there were 16 fails on that inspection report. And so it was figuring out what it was and what it meant for Encore and how, because my first was, my first and you know, and I am a net. I am just a person. I'm just going to throw it out there. We're a nonprofit, and so everything is public knowledge. Um, and so I just um, that's just the way I, I do things. I keep completely transparent with what's going on with us, mm-hmm. um, with my staff, and with the public too. Mm-hmm. If you have questions, so it was. Are are we going to survive this? Mm-hmm. Once again, I feel like, are we going to survive this? Um, so. So then, you know, I started looking at it more and I started, okay, they said to, um, to contact architects. I don't know architects. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. That's not, because that's not my world. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so I reached out to some, um, to some people in the community. Um, I went on Google and just, you know, went, Oh, okay. Here are some architects in the area trying to keep, kind of keep it local. So, um, I have two architects right now that I have some plans from, mm-hmm. um, that I'm, um, have just, just submitted the second one's, um, ideas to my board. Mm-hmm. Um, one that was actually, a, um, a, the hospital, um, recommended someone they've worked with that's um that's familiar familiar that is um that is local and um and then there's somebody else um that he is um, originally from Decatur mm-hmm. so um some people that have ideas and some experience with this kind of thing but nobody really does and all even I contacted several architects out there just you know sending the information getting them um because we just you need to know because they said you have to go through an architect. That's what the fire marshal said specifically. Use an architect because if you make changes, we come back in. You'll have spent this money for nothing unless you use someone to be consulting with us. So we're <laughs> doing it the right way. I love the state comes in to a nonprofit and says you have to spend money on this, but we're not going to give you the money to spend. Yeah. You know what I mean? To make this improvement. Yeah, but you got to be up to code. You know what I mean? Like, right. exactly. anyways, all that's all that aside. Yeah, it's yeah frustrating. Yes. So, and architects are expensive. In my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, an architect, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm luck- sure they do some like pro bono work, yes, but you know, that's yeah. what I kind of, you know, one of the ones that I kind of selected were ones that kind of had strong, mm. you know, noddings towards that. And then, um, 
So, and they are actually the one, the, I have the two um, people that actually I've got um, some information from and have done some research are both, you know, have, are doing it in, I think, a fair way. Mm -hmm. um, one, one um, firm, firm, I think is what you refer to architects is um, they're going to do it hourly. A lot of times you do like a, they give you pay a certain money for that job, mm -hmm. so a certain mm -hmm. amount. So um, when he's going to do hour and hourly rates, so he doesn't overcharge us. Mm -hmm. I for see. What. So it's fair because they're yeah. doing work too. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're, so yeah, they're labor. To... Like, like they've got to be paid for their labor, you know, yes. for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, and with that, I'm trying to personally after my first, oh my goodness. Um, and um, was I'm trying to look at this as an opportunity um, for Encore and our our spaces are horrible. I mean, if you we are converted to the best as we can, build, you know, can do. We have tried our best to convert this old. I don't even know when it was originally built. I'm going to do that research um, and um, probably it would be 50s or 60s. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the sale barn and to make it work for us at this point we really are running out of spaces for our services mm -hmm. we are maxed mm -hmm. so how can we make this better the spaces are not pretty mm -hmm. um they are functional mm -hmm. how do we make certain but well, that's fine with me and it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be mm -hmm. fancy and mm -hmm. all the cool stuff mm -hmm. um i just want to serve more people the best that we can you know mm -hmm. with to the, help them live their lives. Mm -hmm. So how can we change this? How can we make this an opportunity? Mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, I went to my board and we discussed it and we're just looking at all the options right now, mm -hmm. looking at the architects, um, letting them give us their ideas and their thoughts, what we can do. We do own six acres in that space. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do on our own land, our mm -hmm. own property? I've mm -hmm. always kind of had in the back of my head a dream you know, but that dream was always far off. This mm -hmm. is really pushing things forward. Mm -hmm. You know, do we do things on our property? Do we do mm -hmm. a phased building project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of a thing? Do mm -hmm. we do, do we move? Mm -hmm. Do we find a different location? Mm -hmm. You know, we're out there, you know, at the edge of town, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. do we find something else, you know, another existing building that we would have to modify without a doubt? Mm -hmm. Do we do two buildings, one for services, one for the store? Do mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many things mm -hmm. out there and thoughts. So I'm um, consulting with a realtor. I've, we actually have looked at an, a, a previous commercial space mm. in town. Mm -hmm. Don't think it would quite work for our needs, but it, yeah. But now is time of the essence with this. They do not give me a date that it has to be completed. The um, DHS. Basically I have to report to um, them every week mm -hmm. with no end date. So I just have to tell them what we are doing every week um, to mm -hmm. mitigate these fire marshal plans. <sighs> and I have, I have a form that I've all filled out with dates and all the details that I submit every week. And if I make any changes that week, then we fill that in. You know, I haven't built any firewalls yet. So yeah, yeah. that hasn't changed. Sure, sure. Well, quickly, Stephanie, how do folks support you in this effort? <sighs> They can support us easiest ways just um, to come and shop in the store, mm -hmm. obviously, um, because the store is doing great and we appreciate all of your support there. But then also to listen and to um, to re as as we make the as we are getting ready to we will be doing some campaigns. All right. Very so good. Come to us. So look, for, look out for that. Stephanie Kuntz, executive director of Encore Thrift Store. Our guest network news is next. With SRN News.